This is the Biz News Podcast, one-on-one conversations with experts in business and personal development. Jeremy Shapiro says he has spent more than a quarter of a century helping small business owners make the transition from being solopreneurs to business owners. It's the age-old problem of people having to work in their businesses instead of on their businesses. Mr. Shapiro joins us for this episode of Biz News Interviews to offer some ideas. Jeremy, before we get into specifics, let's give our listeners and viewers a bit of background about you. Where, where, how did you get to where you are right now? Well, my world has always been entrepreneurship and working with business owners, founders, and entrepreneurs. Uh, even back to my very first business decades ago, you know, during my high school years, um, it was working with business owners. And that has only grown over the years. I've had at least a half dozen different businesses and every single one of them is in that world. And, you know, entrepreneurship is a wonderful thing that provides what I call entrepreneurial freedom. And not only do I love that, I love helping clients and master my members out with exactly that too. And you're a member and a leader of a group called Masterminds. When I hear that, I only think of James Bond and the evil Mr. Blofeld. Mwahaha. No, so at the uh, the Bay Area Mastermind, um, we follow in the footsteps of the titans of industry from, you know, a century back. Uh, Napoleon Hill first published in his 1938 book, Think and Grow Rich, this idea of the mastermind. Right. And this is the idea that when you have more than two people get together in the same room who are like minded and are on this journey, they can help each other out. And you get this creation of like this third mind, this greater mind that encompasses everyone who's there. And so we use a version of that at the Bay Area Mastermind to help like minded entrepreneurs get together once a month for a full day of working on their business not working in the business, but working on the business, doing the bigger picture work that really helps businesses to pivot and take quantum leaps forward instead of just doing the same old, same old again and again and getting the same result again and again. Now, working on versus working in has been a big thing with you. Explain the difference and some examples. So working in your business is doing the work of the business, right? So you think about a typical example. If you're a carpenter, you have a carpentry business, The work of the business is going out there and hammering nails and building things with wood, right? The work on the business is figuring out what your mission, vision, and purpose are, figuring out where it is that you'd like to go, figuring what the systems should be like in your business, figuring out how you plan to exit your business and all those bigger picture things, which really help you to move your business forward. So, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to say if you happen to be a solopreneur and so many of the members of our audiences uh, seemingly are, isn't it difficult to work on while you're still in the thing? Yeah. So in an ideal world, maybe you'd spend all your time working on your business. But with our mastermind groups, we meet once a month for a full day of that work on the business. We can all afford to carve out one day a month to work on the business even if you're spending the rest of the time working in your business, especially for us solopreneurs who feel like they can't afford the time or the financial investment to step away from the business and do the work on the business. Those are usually the ones who need it the most because until you can get out of the way of yourself and your business, it's really hard for it to thrive and to grow. Over the years you've been uh, preaching this, what's been a, uh, a good result that you like to point to? Yeah, there's a a story of one of our members I love who uh, who came into our group with one business, uh, like many of our members do. And over his tenure in the group, actually pivoted the business, launched new side businesses and really became a true serial entrepreneur. But one of the main businesses he came into the group with, um, he actually built up and lined up for sale. He sold the business, did very well on that, and then did something many dream of, which was pack up the family into an RV, drove around the country, didn't do any work, just spent quality family time for a good year or so, and then settled down uh, elsewhere in the country and decided to do what many entrepreneurs do, which was launch more businesses and invest in other businesses. And so a lot of that came from the systems that uh, we helped to put into place, the pivots that came within the business, and really that peer advisory from other members in the group. So we've got tons of stories like that, um, but it always comes down to others seeing the blind spots that you don't see in your own business 
and helping you get answers to the big burning questions you have about what to do next and where to go in your business. It must be rather difficult to tell an entrepreneur that we've found these blind spots. How do you go about doing that without getting uh, some instant and physical retribution? <laughs> So uh, it's interesting. Sometimes people will ask me when they're uh, when they're applying to our test drive of the mastermind, and that's where you get to invest in just one day of joining us behind closed doors to see if you're a fit for the group, right? They'll ask like, hey, like what makes for a good member or what would be not a good member of the group? And these are some of the things that we look for during that test drive. Um, you need to be open to being vulnerable, right? Sharing what's really going on. When we get behind closed doors, this is the chance to share what's working, what's not, and where you need help. And you can't do that successfully if you're not willing to be vulnerable and share what's really going on, what the real numbers are in the business and what the real true challenges are. And along with that, not just for sharing, but as the being open to receiving feedback. And so we've had folks who've joined us for the day and we get to see the true colors and realize that maybe that they're not open to that feedback or peer advisory. And that's not gonna be a good fit for the group. So everyone in our group is all growth focused, right? Everyone is a lifelong learner. Part of what we screen for is we're asking like, hey, what are the, you know, what are some of your favorite books you've been reading lately? What other groups are you part of? What conferences do you go to? We want to see people who are in that personal and professional development, not just now, but that's just who they are. We're all voracious readers. So when we see people who are open to that, that's a really, really good signal to us that they're going to be a better fit for the group. What is a, a warning sign that somebody really is not fit. Yeah, so there's a few a few signs for us. One is if they're too early stage, um, we found that we had to set the line somewhere that if you're too early stage in your business, there's not as much you can provide to the group in terms of peer advisory from you. And instead of sharing best practices and refining something, if you're too early stage, you're asking how do I questions, not from a place of experience and iteration, but from a place of never been there before, right? So. That's why we work, we work exclusively with established existing businesses who have a product or a service, they're actively selling, they're generating revenue, they have a sales pipeline, and now they're looking to scale up and grow. And for the business owner to find true entrepreneurial freedom. So that's one of the things we look for, right? Um, the second piece we look for is uh, we want those lifelong learners, right? These are our voracious readers. These are those who are going to conferences and taking courses and improving themselves. Um, Thirdly, we're looking for folks who truly are the business owner. Occasionally, we'll come across folks who think they're a business owner, but they're maybe a realtor or a financial planner or someone who really answers to a boss that they may be like a, uh, they may have their own shingle or brand, but they still are under someone else's thumb. So a question we ask in that is, you know, if the group provided feedback on, say, doubling your prices overnight or changing what you sell. Could you go with a stroke of a pen, make that happen? And like in the case of realtors and financial planners, like rarely can they do that, right? A broker or something else is a different story, but for the most part, they can. Whereas a true business owner can say like, yeah, it's my business. If I want to change it, I do it. That's, that explains the increasing price of Slurpees at the corner convenience store. <laughs> we must have talked to that business owner. <laughs> yes, I can imagine they'd be a, a good candidate. Why did you get into this? Well, I had actually been a member of mastermind groups and I have been for decades and they've proven so valuable to me. Uh, I remember there was one group in particular that I was joining and I wrote the largest check I'd written in my life to join the group. And I remember holding this piece of paper worth way too much money and looking at it and the person whose group I was about to join. And I had an idea of what the ROI was that I was looking for and how I was going to get there. And so they promised they'd help me to get there. And so I handed over this uncomfortably, you know, heavy swallowing check to them. Um, and I joined that group and I, and I never got that thing that I was looking for. I got tremendous value in different ways, way more and way differently and way better than I could ever have anticipated. I just didn't know that's the value I would receive or that's how I would get it. And some of those are the new partnerships that came from other members in the group. Um, an entirely new business idea that I vetted in the group, found new customers for, launched and built to a multi-million dollar company just from the conversations we had in the room. And the fact that any of those people that, you know, I was in the room with 
to this day, when I see their face on my phone, those are calls I take. Those are people I still consider close friends because those are the people I was in the trenches with really behind the closed doors working on what matters most for years. So I've seen firsthand the power of the masterminds and how powerful it can be personally and professionally. And, uh, you know, I also realized there's sort of three different categories of mastermind groups, valuable in different ways, and, uh, and found sort of the sweet spot for what I found is the ideal format and structure for a mastermind group. And so that's what I've been running now for quite a while is uh, exactly that kind, of, uh, that kind of organization to help folks behind closed doors at the Bay Area Mastermind. Now you say that you found three different types of uh, mastermind groups. What are they? So on one end of the spectrum, we have uh, what I call the high-end destination groups. And that's that group I was just sharing about. Typically, the way this works is you hop on a plane, you fly somewhere exotic or you know far away for a few days of diving deep. You're usually with maybe 20-ish people. And the reality is it takes about a week out of your business and time away from the family and all that. Um, it's extremely expensive, both in terms of membership as well as just the ancillary costs of travel accommodations and so on. And if you're only meeting like two, maybe three times a year, you could have an entirely new business in a period of six months. You could have sold a business, launched a new business, changed directions, and you come back and it's a different world entirely. On the other end of the spectrum, we have what I call like your informal coffee accountability groups. Maybe you get together once a week at the local coffee shop, or you hop on like a phone call once a week. It's usually only a few people. There's generally high turnover. These are usually free to, you know, maybe a hundred bucks a month, you know, and uh, you have maybe 30 to 90 minutes at the most. You can't really get deep into what's going on in your business at that time. And when it's a free group or a low price point, folks tend not to show up because there's other things going on that they could choose to spend their time on. Right. Um, so you don't get a whole lot from those kinds of groups. Uh, maybe just some informal accountability with just a friend. And the middle sweet spot is where I found is the most value. And so for the Bay Area Mastermind, we meet once a month for one full day to deep dive in your business. The once a month cadence gives you enough time to implement and make big changes in your business and a short enough time to actually circle back on that and help you to stay accountable and on track to where you want to go. So that way you have time to actually implement and execute but it's not so short term that you're just working on small tactical things. You do get to work on the bigger picture on your business work. We have uh, viewers and listeners worldwide. It surprises me always to find out where people are watching or listening to us from. So is Masterminds just in the Bay Area of California or where? <laughs> That's a really good question. You know, uh, as we're expanding out beyond the Bay Area, and this happened during the pandemic, actually, we, we'd always been an in-person only meeting. Um, but with the pandemic, almost overnight, we were fully online. And we started attracting members from further afield. And, you know, funnily enough, we'd have uh, folks who were joining our group and only like halfway through their first meeting, they'd ask the question of like, you know, where is everyone located? And we found out we had folks who, uh, who found us from Green Bay, Wisconsin. And they thought we were talking about that Bay Area from uh, the DC and Maryland area who thought we were talking about that bay. And so there's actually a handful of bays out there. But uh, we looked at the idea of changing our name since we were attracting a global audience and realized that Bay Area Mastermind as a name harkens to our origins. And like many wonderful brands out there that started in one particular place or who have a name tied to a location, they've since grown to be more lar larger global brands, but their, their ethos, their history, their story stems from that one location you're you're no longer in the garage in palo alto with hewlett and packard then exactly though i do bike past those places sometimes so yeah that's all that's all wonderful local history where where can our listeners and viewers get more information perhaps you have a website um i do at bayareamastermind.com you can find out all about us uh not just that but um i publish a lot of my writing there as well if you want to see freedom stories from those who found entre entrepreneurial freedom we have those there um, i have a number of workshops freely available we have our reading guides and a ton of great resources there um, it's also where you can find out about our mastermind test drive process and how you can apply to join us for a one-day test drive of the mastermind in person or online, either way works. Um, and we can hop on and discuss what that process is like and where some of those hidden opportunities might be in your business that you don't see without that peer advisory. Jeremy, what would you like to add that we haven't had a chance to talk about? Um, you've covered a ton of great topics. You know, one thing I always find fascinating about seeing guests join us at our mastermind meeting is our guests show up and they have an idea of what they know 
and they have an idea around what they don't know. And that's where their big question is, right? They want feedback on the big thing, keeping them up, keeping them up at night or blocking their growth. But the real light bulb moments I see, those big aha moments where I see that, that, that you know, the eyes go wide, the smile creep across the face and the pen starts scribbling on paper. Those moments are never during the guest's hot seat. It's always during everybody else's time because that's when we all get exposure to the things we didn't know we didn't know. All those big opportunities, pivots, and ideas don't come from the realm of things we know we know or that we know we don't know, but truly from getting that insight and exposure to others doing really great things. And that's where we find out about the things we didn't know we didn't know. From resources, to contacts, to methodologies, to marketing strategies, to everything. So you might know what you, uh, you might have an idea of where you need help, but the real growth comes from surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals, like in a mastermind meeting, and getting exposure to what you didn't know you didn't even know. You've been listening to the Biz News Podcast. We welcome your input. Send your email to editor at biznews.com. That's B-I-Z-G-N-U-S dot com. Thanks for listening.